There's an infamous star you've likely spotted in the night sky. It's called Betelgeuse, located in the Orion constellation, marking Orion's right shoulder. But something unusual has been going on with this star lately. This red supergiant has been dimming frequently over the past few years, which might indicate that it's on the verge of going supernova. Betelgeuse is approximately 600 light years away from Earth, meaning the light we see from it today left the star about 600 years ago. Interestingly, we don't know its exact distance, but it's in that ballpark. If Betelgeuse had already exploded in a supernova within the last 600 years, the light from that explosion would still be traveling towards us. In other words, it's possible that Betelgeuse has already exploded centuries ago, and we could see the explosion at any time, even tomorrow. When Betelgeuse does go supernova, it will be the brightest one ever seen by humans. So just how bright will it be? Will it be visible during the day? Will it pose any danger? And why do recent observations of Betelgeuse challenge our current understanding of stellar physics? Welcome to territory. This is your space. The core of most stars, including Betelgeuse, is made up of hydrogen and helium, the lightest elements in the universe. When the core runs out of nuclear fuel to fuse, it can no longer support the star's outer layers, leading to a gravitational collapse. As the star collapses under its own gravity, it heats up and compresses until the pressure becomes too great. This rapid collapse generates a shock wave that blows off the star's outer layers in a massive explosion. The result is a supernova, which releases an enormous amount of energy and light sometimes outshining entire galaxies for a brief period. To put this in perspective, our sun has a luminosity or power output of 3.8 times 10 to the power 26 watts. However, a supernova observed in 2015, called Assassin 15LH, reached a peak luminosity of around 2 times 10 to the power 38 watts. The brightness would be the combined output of over 500 billion suns. But why didn't we see it from Earth, you ask? Well, Assassin 15LH was located in another galaxy. Betelgeuse, however, is in our cosmic backyard. This proximity means Betelgeuse's supernova would be incredibly bright, potentially outshining even Sirius, the brightest star in our night sky. And it would likely remain visible for weeks. However, will it pose any danger to Earth? A supernova occurring within a few tens of light years from Earth would have serious consequences, including harmful radiation exposure. The danger zone for these effects is estimated to be around 100 light years. Fortunately, Betelgeuse is beyond this range, so we are safe from harm. For comparison, if a nearby star like Alpha Centauri, just over four light years away, were to go supernova, it would shine as bright as the moon and expose Earth to dangerous radiation. But Alpha Centauri is not massive enough to become a supernova. While there are other visible red giants that could potentially go supernova, Betelgeuse is currently the most intriguing. And that is why its recent activity has raised concerns among scientists. One fascinating aspect of Betelgeuse is its rotation. Recent measurements using the ALMA array of telescopes revealed that Betelgeuse rotates at a surprisingly fast rate for a star of its size, about once every 20 years. This means its surface spins at roughly 18,000 kilometers per hour, or five kilometers per second, much faster than Earth's rotation. This rapid rotation is unusual for such a massive star and challenges our understanding of stellar physics. But how do you measure the rotation of a cosmic body so far away? We use the Doppler effect. Imagine an ambulance with its siren blaring, approaching you. As it gets closer, the sound of the siren seems higher in pitch. This happens because the sound waves are compressed as the ambulance moves towards you. Once the ambulance passes and moves away, the sound waves are stretched out, making the pitch seem lower. This change in pitch due to the movement is known as the Doppler shift. Similarly, for Betelgeuse, one half of the star's surface is moving towards us, while the other half moves away, creating a gradient of color shifts. By observing these shifts, scientists can determine the star's rotational speed. For Betelgeuse, this speed was found to be much higher than expected. And scientists now know why. 
In the recent past, several papers have proposed that a small, close binary companion might be responsible for Betelgeuse's periodic dimming. This is where it gets tricky. Betelgeuse is so massive and bright that spotting a smaller, fainter object right next to it is not easy. That was when Steve Howell, a scientist at NASA Ames Research Center, and a team of astrophysicists decided to bring in a game changer, Allo Peak, a speckle imager mounted on the Gemini North Telescope to help them finally crack the case. What makes it unique is its speckle imaging ability, a kind of astronomical imaging technique that uses very short exposure times to freeze out the distortions that are caused by Earth's atmosphere. This technique enables high resolution, which when combined with the light collecting power of Gemini North's 8.1 meter mirror, allowed for Betelgeuse's faint companion to be directly detected for the first time ever. This glowing orange orb is Betelgeuse, and this faint blue streak is its newly discovered buddy. Betelgeuse, which means hand of the giantess in Arabic, now officially has a companion that a team of astronomers has proposed naming Sawarha, which means her bracelet. Personally, I can't think of a better name to honor the star that orbits Betelgeuse. Upon this discovery, Howell and his team analyzed the companion star's light to determine its characteristics. And what they found aligned perfectly with previous predictions for Betelgeuse. The study papers have been published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters and are linked in the description below. They found that the companion star is six magnitudes fainter than Betelgeuse in the optical wavelength range. It has an estimated mass of around 1.5 times that of the Sun, and it is a hot blue-white star orbiting the red giant at a distance equivalent to four times the distance between Earth and the Sun, fairly close for binary stars. That means it exists within the extended atmosphere of Betelgeuse. The team also suggests that this star hasn't started burning hydrogen in its core yet, the process that typically marks a star's main sequence phase. As a result, the Betelgeuse system now consists of two stars which are at the opposite ends of their life cycles, even though they formed around the same time. But this delay doesn't mean that Betelgeuse's companion is in for a long life. We're certain that Betelgeuse will eventually explode in a cataclysmic supernova, though the exact timing remains a mystery. After all, though Betelgeuse is only around 10 million years old, the fact that it is 700 times the size of our sun means it has burned through most of its nuclear fuel much faster than our 4.6 billion year old star. In this scenario, the companion star faces two grim fates, neither of which looks promising. First, the immense gravity of Betelgeuse could pull the smaller star into it, consuming it in a cannibalistic event that might occur within the next 10,000 years. Alternatively, Betelgeuse could explode before the companion is fully consumed. This could disrupt the companion's orbit, potentially accelerating its demise or altering its path altogether. So yeah, neither outcome bodes well for the companion star. But in the meantime, astronomers will work to gain more answers. In November 2027, we will get another look at the stellar companion when it achieves maximum separation from Betelgeuse. Rest assured, the discovery of this smaller, fainter star is nothing short of remarkable. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.